So now I'm gonna look at the main bearings. Because uh, what I want to determine is what the oil specs are, what my oil gap might be on, on each one of the mains. That gives me some other good info. So real quick, I'm just gonna wipe out these bearings just to not get myself all messy. Another important thing to do before doing this measurement or the reassembly is make sure you wipe down all your caps. You don't want any junk on those. And red rags are actually terrible for this. These things are absolutely horrible for engine assembly because what they do is they leave fuzz behind and the fuzz can get trapped between surfaces and throw off measurements. Anytime you're using those red rags, as soon as you're done doing that portion of the assembly, you should always take compressed air and blow off any suitcase handles. Oh wait, yeah, they're all dry. I just cleaned them on the bench, I forgot. I always start the bolts by hand. There's nothing worse than cross-threading one of these. Welcome back, Lucy. This is the torque specification for these is 18 pounds plus 90 degrees. Here we are starting on that top right corner. There's 18 pounds on every bolt. Got Lucy back and here comes 90 degrees. So now I finally get a chance to play with the cool tools. Yay. All right, what I got here. So I've got to get this thing set up to measure the mains. And uh, in order to do that, we uh, already measured them at 2.2431 or 2.2430, depending on which journal you're looking at. And so I'm gonna set the tool up for 2.250. We do that by putting the 0.05 ring on the 2.2 probe and attaching the collar. What you do is you just press the uh, the plunger against the anvil and line up the bottom half of this so that you're making contact on both ends of the bore gauge. I'll show you what you do with the dial here in a second. So you get the outer dial set up the widest part of the suite and that's zero to 250. Now, why is that significant? Well, we're going to take a measurement it's smaller than that, but we have the tool set up for 2.250. So as we measure the bore, this will rotate around past 2.250 and give us how much we need to take off of that value. And that tells us what the bore diameter is. So here we are back with this thing again. We're done with the rods for now, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. Let's just say that this is our block, and it's upside down, and here are the mains. There's going to be two axes here, axes. There's one there, and there's one there. And just about every reference you're ever going to find, X is horizontal, and Y is vertical. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two measurements for the horizontal and vertical portions of each one of these bores. And you see why we did D's and W's on this is because crankshafts are rotating parts. There's no other way to differentiate it than to reference those parts off of itself. In this case, we can use known measurements. If we get the block upside down while we're taking these measurements, it wouldn't matter if it's upside down or right side up. So we've got our X1 and our X2. We've got our Y1 and our Y2. We're gonna do the same thing with the mains, one through five. And here we go. So with this tool zeroed for 250, what I'm going to do here is compress the plunger and insert it into the first bore. And when I have my correct measurement, it's when the needle stops rising and begins to traverse the other direction on the dial. Our first measurement is 38. Ouch. Ding. I'll be double checking the tool now. 
don't bang it on anything or ding it on anything when you're uh, working because that'll throw it off. I'll have to reinspect it. So number one, that was a vertical measurement, making it a Y. We have 0 0.0038 as our first measurement on the gauge. We know we have our tool zeroed to 2.2500 0 0, because it's four decimal places. And you just do the math and you make your subtraction and that would be your final value. For the sake of time, I'm going to do the math last and then uh, match up all the numbers so we can just roll through the measurements. So I've re-zeroed the tool after the bump and I measure again. There we go. Looks to me like we've got, we've got our 38 back. All right, and then we move it into the next closest spot to get our two measurement. It looks like we've got 38 again, and that's a good thing. 38. So my Y2 value again is 0 0.0038. Now, the tool presents a little bit of a difficulty, and that is that it only reaches but so far into the block before I can't take measurements any longer. So I have to fish this thing through the bores. And so what I'm going to be doing is disassembling the mains as I take these measurements and move forward so that I have room to operate the tool. Looks like 36. 35 on the front. 35 on the back. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven's good. I'm gonna check the other side of the bearing. I got thirty-eight out of that. Thirty-eight. Now we're gonna take our X measurements. When you're doing this, the X measurements aren't as critical as the Y measurements, but they're still very important. None of the bores will ever be perfectly square, and that's intentional. They're slightly football shaped, so there's room for machine work. The wider gap on the x-axis reduces friction while keeping a little bit more oil capacity around the journals. Both of those are good things. Also, the x measurement doesn't experience thrust like the y measurement does during compression and ignition strokes, so there are no negative effects of this. It's only about a third of the top and bottom bearing races that are responsible for keeping the crank aligned. So if one of your x measurements is far out of spec, or your bearings have unusual wear on them, you should make additional measurements on the 45 degree axes and compare that as well. Reinspect the old bearings to make sure the wear pattern isn't much bigger or smaller than a third of its face. If you find that condition, the machine shop will need to perform an aligned bore. Now we take these loose. Solves the problem. Three, three, thirty-three. Next. Three, two, three, three. Thirty. Thirty and thirty-one. I got eight. I know where you place it. It's nine. I just saw an eleven. A 10. 10 and a 14. So now I'm just cleaning up the math. At this point I just subtract the 10,000th values from the zero point of the bore gauge and it gives me the inside diameter of the main bearings. So we're only a few easy math problems away from the main bearing oil clearances. So this is where it gets fun. What you want to do is you take the diameter of the crankshaft and you subtract that from the measurements that you've got here. You don't have to do one number against each other, but what you probably want to do is take the biggest diameter that you can measure to give the high spec, and then the lowest diameter and subtract them from the average of this. So if you take 89, subtract 30, then what you end up with is 59. So the highest is 0 0.0059, and the tightest clearance would be on the Y measurement, 2462 minus 30, is 0 0.0032. So you just repeat the same process for the rest of the numbers.
there you have it. There's your oil clearances. Of course, there's always plastic gauge. While it's very accurate, it's not a tool used to blueprint an engine. It's just one of those measure twice things that you should always do to check your work. After you know your crank's diameters, a bore gauge gives you far more accurate means of checking your oil clearance and the overall health of your parts. So that's a wrap. Like it if you learned something. Stay tubed.